Hello everyone and welcome to the laid back edition of El Supercast. With us today is Joe Lamb. And also bringing up the rear with a machine gun, Dante's. <laughs> he just shot me in the ass. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you get. Some kind of weak man you turned out to be. Uh, Danny's is a hell of a man, you know. Danny's was supposed to meet me in Glasgow. Hey, it's not my fault. The phone company <laughs> didn't work. <laughs> you know what? That's a long story, and one that would take a lot longer than 15 minutes to discuss to you. So yes, yes this this is true. We should we should avoid that story. <laughs> <laughs> just just because it's long. <laughs> well, not, not that long, but... Yeah. But it was quite funny. <laughs> uh, no, it was pretty sad. Yeah, it was. Danny's was really you sad. Don't want to to <laughs> <laughs> so, let's start things off with... Uh, what have you guys been doing, music-wise? What's been going on? Uh, okay, because there's not much for me to say. Well, you know, all, uh, all we know about Dan is, is he's done a couple of songs with Spin Tunes and he hasn't bought a guitar yet. Ta-da! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's there's a bit more to it than that. Yeah, well, I did two shadows for this round of Spin... No, two sh- two songs for the, for the last two Spin Tunes. This Spin Tune, I did a... Uh, shut up for round one, yeah. Um, but I, I already t- uh, talked about it in the in the last time I I was on uh, on the Ginju cast. Yeah. So um, yeah, about the guitar, yeah, I've been meaning to get some new equipment, but uh, it's been taking way too long because uh, my father is way too stupid. You're blaming your father. You're blaming your father for you not being able to make a choice about what kind of guitar you want. No, no, no. Well, <laughs> for, no, 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 yeah, that's a different issue. But he was Is going it? to get he was going to get me some new recording equipment so I could actually like use my guitar guitars that I have now and stuff uh, to actually record decently instead of just using a laptop microphone. Mm-hmm. But he still hasn't, and I've been waiting since the beginning of October, so almost two months. I mean, that, that said, though, Dan, so some of your recordings are, are pretty damn good if you're just using a laptop mic. Uh, well, yeah, with acoustic guitar, but it, mm. it can't record electric or bass at all. You can so, take a direct feed in, no, my mind you, that never works very well. So it's very limited. That's why yeah. I want some proper gear. Let's see, Dan's Dan's ja- <laughs> hmm? what kind of uh, guitar are you thinking of getting? Oh my god, we'll be here forever. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's another issue. Yeah, I was, <laughs> I was wondering if I should be getting a new guitar or a new amplifier. But I don't. I really don't know. It's it's so difficult to decide. And yeah about guitar definitely if I'm getting a new guitar it will be an electric guitar but what kind there are a lot of different models and you know the different sounds so yeah it's, it's difficult to choose line, eh? so over there in Belgium do you have a variety of uh, music shops that you can check out yeah but well I was planning on buying online but I could also go to a store and see that, well, there's, that there's a go in and uh, and see how the guitar is before you buy it. You know, a little bit of trying. Yeah, that's true. But well, uh, the in most stores here, the the it's quite limited. So you you have to be kind of lucky that the kind of guitar that you're looking for isn't stuck there. That's why it's taking so much time, isn't it? Travis Hazen, uh, Paul, and people that know different 
not sunlight, but me, but what, two electrics, 12 string acoustic bass, and as I go, it's guitar. <laughs> it makes noise. <laughs> Yeah, well, if if I'm buying something new, I want it to be proper, even if it's not like something costly, because I can't really report something expensive. But just I, I want to uh, to make it the best choice I can got within ask, my did, budget. Did you, did you totally hate me when I went and got that square strap so cheaply on a whim? <laughs> well, yeah, that that it sounds like that was a good buy. So oh, a, I, that's good for you. Yeah. My daughter was like, just walking past the shop window, and it was like, Charlotte, hang on, we've got to go in here and buy this guitar. And she's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> so I went and you know, handed, over, handed over 40 pounds, got change, got a brand new square strat, and then said, right, now we'll go to a real music shop, and I'll show you why you want to buy that. And I took her in, and she was looking at the, you know, the strats that I had there, and we got to the square section, and I was like, um, is, is that not the same as yours? Yes, it is. Um... That one's nearly £200. Yes, it is. <laughs> yeah, normally it's a lot more expensive. <laughs> and I know you also got it to rub it in my face. <laughs> well, I've got to. Yeah, that wouldn't be even, did <laughs> <laughs> That's just evil, man. Well, you know, that right. it wouldn't be Joe Covenant if he wasn't being nasty to Dante's. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, a, that's a story. <laughs> But well, so tell us a bit about uh, your uh, your lay- what you've been up to musically lately. See that you need to take your sugar. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone knows he's my boy. Oh take- God, what, what I've been doing really. I mean, it's, 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 same as Dan, he's obviously I've been uh, jumping into spring tunes as well, writing some other stuff. Um, well, not really the same since you've been doing a load of shadows and. Well, that is true. <laughs> yes, with myself and uh, my erstwhile uh, duet partner Denise Hudson. Um, follow us on Twitter, Duality Two Three Seven. We basically sat down with spin tunes and the, the songs that we did for the actual drums came from, on quite honestly, demos that Denise had sent me, and I thought just just making some tracks and. Done. It's just the way things have happened this time. So I took the demos and chopped them up and stuck them together and got excited. Now I thought, you know, personally, at least things other people think, you know, it's like trans, that there's some of the best things we've actually done as, as a duet. Uh, the first round, the judges thought, okay, the second round, for some reason, they didn't seem to like the song, which I thought was one of the best things I'd ever written. <laughs> Uh, so we'll run with that for the, the last round, but if he drunk if he run walks with the shadows, you know, and I was like, oh, the bish- oh, so we should do the shadow in this your actual song. And we were like, what? <laughs> okay. And so for the last round, we did four shadows, and also did, uh, I was going to say all of the vocals, all of the vocals, apart from the bits of the chorus that Paul joined us on, on Paul Potts' uh, shadow song as well. So we were actually on five of the shadow tracks for the last round of spin tunes. Uh, this round I don't actually think we don't have any done because Denise has got stuff on. Uh, and I'm actually battering ahead with my second novel because I just want to... I want to do Nano Rhymo just for the hell of it, but I've actually... I'm lining up a publisher in Scotland who may take the book for general publication, which would be really cool. Hmm. Neat. But, well, I wonder, why did you, for this last round, uh, do four shadows? Because, well, the, 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 you know the the William Wallace's horse song? Yeah. That I did just for, for the, the hell of it, you know, I thought. It came to my mind when, when the, as soon as the challenge was, was put out, uh, and it was actually up late that night, so it was actually in that the fiction page, and we're all talking about it, and I was on mic, and somebody would say this, so, so that's a, it's a historical character, any historical character. So all right, okay, well, I'll be, um, uh, I'm the man who shovels the shite behind William Wallace's horse, and the first verse just came to me as we were talking, so I thought it's a shame to lose that, so I just did the song. I uh, did try to make it up, but the most serious behind the comedic part, obviously, by having, you know, this, this common man being the man who ended up having Scotland having their independence, uh, but 
also <laughs> the, the one line which I put in there deliberately, which a lot of people seem to have missed out on. It's it's a truism. That's the thing about common folk. They can shine when they see it. That to me is the most important line of the whole song. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, the the, uh, the Apollo song. I must admit, the Columbia song. I am really pleased with that. One. Very good. Uh, it was quite nice when one of the judges said that he had to put that song to the best one the entire round. Um, but I found it strange because to me it was very, very like the song done for the previous round which got us kicked out of the competition, you know, so... <laughs> <laughs> um, Denise's songs, again, there were the two songs we spoke about. One of them was almost entirely hard. Um, uh, there's actually a guitar in the background of it that because I just bought this guitar and I was you know, talking to her and she said, so you've got the guitar? I said, yeah, hang on a second, but you hear it, so I played it. And she's hearing this guitar and going, oh, oh, can I record this? And she went, yeah, and I said, yeah, okay. <laughs> so she recorded it and used it in the background of the uh, Emilia Earhart song. And the other one, the Triangle song, she just sent that to me and I, I had to stitch the vocals together to be able to get it on top of it. So but there was a lot of work, but then, I'll be honest, I didn't find it really as quickly as we just managed it. Uh, I think we did it to prove we could. I know <laughs> we could, I don't know if, if the, the impetus is there. Uh, you know, we'll just wait. We'll just wait. I doubt very much if we love any of this. I'm wondering, where do you find all the time to come up with so many songs? Well, that, that's the thing. I mean, I, I'm... Because I've been writing so much this last, well, this this month and a little bit earlier, um, I've been wondering that myself, and people have been asking me about the, more the novel writing side than the songwriting side. Uh, it's just writing. My problem with, with writing songs is every time I pick up my guitar, I play the same chords, and I think, surely I've played exactly these same chords before in exactly the same way, in exactly the same meter, exactly the same fashion. But every time I come to sing something, it kind of comes out different. <laughs> uh, it's always a surprise to me when I write a song. It really is. And myself and Edric have had this conversation a few times. Where he's like, you know, there's, there's the fun in it and there's a challenge. There's very little fun in writing a song to me. It's hard bloody work. <laughs> Because I'm always stressing about whether or not uh, is this original? Does the lyrics suck? Are these chords too basic? Is my guitar playing absolutely rubbish? You know, it's it's quite stressful for me right now. So. <laughs> well, I I understand that. You know, I've I've been uh, working on a few things for uh, for promotional ideas on this uh, video game that I'll be for the new game, yeah. Yeah. And I figure, well, you know, this beat, I used it before, but I really like this beat, so I'm going to use it again. Yeah. <laughs> but then, you know, I mean, but, but then this is the thing, you know, you, you've got groups and bands, etc., that have made a career out of playing almost, almost exactly the same tune, you know, time and time again. Status quo, you know, 12 bar blues, that's it. That's pretty much all they've done, more or less. And I know that a lot of people have been slating Nickelback for being exactly the same, you know. I don't listen to Nickelback, so I can't really say, but what I've heard of Nickelback, I've heard three songs, I like the three songs, but that's all I've heard. You know? Um, but people develop a style, and that, that style can be what defines them. You know, like Phil Collins gave a three on his drums, which was taught to him by Mike Oldfield. He, was, he became known for that. Did it make all the songs song the same? Maybe not, but it was something that was definitive behind him, you know? So that, that doesn't yeah. make so much difference. So, gentlemen. We are almost out of time. Is there uh, any websites that you guys want to give props to before we get on out? Okay, what I will say is that uh, myself and Denise have been asked by Lyrical Venus on Twitter, it's Heather, to do her radio show for her because she's gone on holiday. So if you check out Twitter under Joe Covenant or Duality237, we will be putting up links as soon as it's done. All right, and with that, we're out of here. Take care, everyone. See you, folks. Bye.